Welcome back to It's Your Law. I'm George Curtis, and uh, my guest is the not very retired or retiring Mike Ellis. Uh, <laughs> always a delight to have Mike here. We probably disagree on everything, but when we're all through, I can rely on Mike to just use common sense. His love of his country and his love of the citizens is so much stronger than his love of any political party that that makes a pretty reliable guy and I always thought he was the most trusted member of the Senate in all of the years I worked in politics as a kind of a lobbyist for the trial lawyers for consumers even though he often was on the other side of issues he was sensibly on the other side and he wasn't always on the other side of the issues people before corporations I don't know that there are too many Republicans who believe in that to today, but I think Mike did. However, when we left off the first session, we were talking about the terrible plight of minorities in this country, religious minorities, uh, people of color, and uh, I have some personal experience with this where the uh, percentage of our population that are people of color is probably about 25 percent, but the percentage of uh, people of color in prison is about 85 percent. They're getting screwed on the educational level, they're getting screwed on the economic level, and their kids are coming up into a situation where it's rigged against them. Your thoughts on that, Mike? Well, you know, people like to blame uh, the, the teachers in the Milwaukee school system. They mustn't be doing their job. <clears throat> the reality of it is 90% of the problem that we have today isn't new, but it's getting worse and that is there is no basis, there is no family setting for a majority of these kids that are going to schools in the Milwaukee area, in the Baltimore area, all over the United States. So there's a breakdown in terms of filling that glass from the time the child is born until we turn that child over at age six, five, whatever it may be, to the school system. There is nothing there. The glass is empty. They're coming to school from a situation in which many of them don't even know who their fathers are. There's a, a lot of drugs in these family settings, if you can even call them a family. So it becomes almost impossible for the school teachers or the institution of education to fill that glass because there's no basis, there's nothing. There's no transference of, of, of a moral code from one generation to the next. They're, they're, just, they're just running wild on the streets. You go to Summerfest two years ago, people were having trouble getting out of Summerfest. At the end of the day, uh, there were kids robbing them and carjackings are out at all. Why, why is this going on in, in, in in the African-American community, and it's going on because these kids were shortchanged from the day they were born. They weren't taught what's right and what's wrong. And as they grow and get older, they become more wild, so to speak, and it's a breakdown in the family. Then we give them to the schools, and you can talk to any teacher in the Milwaukee school system, and I'll bet if you go to Baltimore, they'd say the same thing. They're having a hard time controlling these kids in the school setting because at the end of the day, anything that they've taught them gets lost when they go back to a situation. No dad in the family, a mother who maybe she's working, <clears throat> maybe she's not. The fact of the matter is, until we establish responsibilities for the parents, the children will pay the price. And the day is going to have to come when a minor hijacks a car, some biological individual that produced that child and then left him stranded on an island without any water should be held accountable for what they did to that kid. And until we get to that, we're not gonna clean up the mess. Well, I think that's pretty strong language, but of course, nothing else has worked. I have to admit, with uh, nothing else has worked to stop this steady sinking 
of the minorities, especially uh, as you refer to the, the black minorities, which are African Americans, uh, African -Americans uh, they're losing, their kids are losing, society is losing, and they aren't having the education to get ahead. They're probably no better off than they were 50 years ago. And uh, like you, uh, maybe more than you, I was, I was proud to vote for Obama. I, I was proud that this country elected a minority president but at the same time, did that presidency really help the black African American population? There's no evidence of it. No, there's not. But <clears throat> if you leave your dog at a Walmart when it's 110 out and you keep the windows closed, you're going to get you're going to get nailed by the uh, animal rights people. If you leave a child in the back seat of a car without proper ventilation, you can do some time in the slammer. <clears throat> That's endangering that child's health. But what's going on today across this nation, you have child neglect. Now, they may eat, they may drink, but they are intellectually neglected. They're left wild on the streets in many cases. It's child neglect that is producing this rapid increase of African-American kids who gradually go from stealing pop bottles to stealing cars and ending up in the prisons. Now, until we hold the adult responsible for the neglect of that child, that in itself should be a crime, the neglect of a child resulting in that child giving the type of hope that he doesn't have, the education he won't get, he ends up in a confrontation with the cops. We have the cops versus the African Americans. It all goes back to, it goes back to the players. Now we have a lot of cops that need some help. But we also have 90% of them are excellent. But to stay with this, this plight of the, of the African-American kid, the parents should be held responsible for their conduct. Well, I agree. The model has not worked. The model has contributed to the problem. Uh, but then, of course, uh, when we take our next break, we come back and figure out what the solution is. It may not be the two people we know are going to be running for president. It may not make a difference who they select as vice president. Right. It may go to the Congress, and it may be deeper than that. So hold those thoughts for our last round. Right. We'll be right back.